All right, here is the beautiful and fun project we are painting today. Fruit, my favorite. Can't wait to paint it with you guys, so let's get started. applied a coat of gesso multi-purpose not gesso multi-purpose sealer on here I let it dry and I very lightly sanded it to get a nice smooth finish I'm a little rough still right here so this area right in here and the edges of this are going to be the roughest places so you want to make sure that you sand them well your sanding dust off. Nice smooth surface. Fill your edges, make sure they feel smooth. And if everything feels smooth, nothing is rough, you are ready to add your base coats on. Alright, a couple rough places here. get the uh, grain raised when we add the uh, multi-purpose sealer. Alright, so we're going to take that same Dampen Artist Sponge and I have um, Blue Mist and Snow White here on my palette. I'm just going to streak through both of those. I want to lighten up that green. I don't want it, that Blue Mist is a little bit dark, darker than what I want. that pick up a little bit of paint and we're just going to paint the entire surface with this color it's still a little dark for me so I'm gonna get a little bit of, a little bit more white so I just mixed it right on my sponge I'll just cover the whole thing goes very quickly. And we'll have to put two coats on here. We'll do our edges as well. I'm going to let it get a little dry so I don't have to handle it quite so much. So we'll let this completely dry and then we'll come back with a second coat. Okay, I've got my second coat on here. I'm going to mist it with a misting bottle way up here just because I want to keep the paint wet. And now I've just tipped into a little bit of that um, blue mist and I'm going to streak it through here and a little bit more misting this is drying over here So I just have a little bit like on the very edge of the brush right of the sponge right there. And that created that really cool look in the background. I really like that. Um, I think it's gonna be a very nice complement to our design when we get it on here. Okay, so now we gotta let it dry and we're gonna transfer on our pattern lines. All right, um, one of the things that I have done here is I've gone ahead and drawn a um, circle in the areas where I want to have my highlight to be on my um, on each fruit. Now I've just drawn it in with this um, dressmaker's pencil. Uh, I sell these on my website. This is Lana's favorite chalk pencil. I love this. The reason that I like to use that is because it comes off with paint or water. I don't have to worry about it getting set into my design and um, it just disappears. So uh, just a great, great pencil to have. Um, we're going to work on getting the bowl looking like a wood bowl first and then we'll go to, to our fruit. So you'll want to have a dry 
sponge. You can have either a, an artist sponge or a stippling sponge, which I sell both. Um, uh, I think a paper towel will work just as well too. It's just that the, the sponge is more absorbent so it will pick up the water quicker. You need some glazing medium and we're going to put um, some colors onto our uh, piece here. We're going to put some um, burnt umber on and you won't need very much paint out. You're going to have to let each layer dry before you can apply the next one and you're going to need some glazing medium. So in, in, the, uh, in a bigger piece we would use a, a, a artist sponge and apply it with that but I am doing a smaller piece so we're not going to be using an artist sponge. We still need this dry sponge or your dry artist sponge. Okay so what we're going to do is I have glazing medium and my burnt umber on here so I'm going to load my brush with some glazing medium and go into some burnt umber and we're just going to I'll zoom in here now we're just going to streak this across here I'm going to remove a little bit of that out of there and pick up some more burnt umber do you need the glazing medium this is going to help us remove. I think you could do it without the glazing medium if you are very fast but you've got to do this before the paint dries and I hope I'm going to be fast enough here on this curved surface. So that's why we need the glazing medium otherwise you could just do it with with the paint without the glazing medium but this surface just be quick don't worry about being precise up around your fruit and stuff because um, you know we'll be coming back and shading and doing all of that fun stuff on there so now I want to take a um, rake brush and I loaded it with water and now I'm going to spatter some water Oh, that's big maybe not quite so big drops I want to spatter some of this water on here Try to do it while your glazing medium is wet. And then we're going to start lifting the paint off of there. And the reason we want to do this first is if we get paint on our fruit, then we can go and remove it. That removed a lot right there, a lot more than what I wanted. Okay, that's pretty good. Alright, we'll let this dry. We've got to come back and put a couple more colors on here. We might do burnt umber again. It's, it's not very dark, but I've got some soft black. So um, we'll see We'll see how this dries and see how it looks. So while we let that dry, let's go work on our um, grapes. We're going to start with our grapes and we're going to take some purple rain we're going to side load for a float all right so when i side load for a float first i spritz my palette with water so i can have water on the edge over here that's my clean water so as i need water to float i will have it i'm going to tip one corner into my brush i'm using an eight flat but you could use a quarter inch angle to do these and I just dip that one corner in there and now I'm just working the paint into my brush this is not a very dark color so we're just going to do some gradual stuff here so where we have our our circle for our highlight we want to try and keep paint out of that area now sometimes it can be very difficult on a very small surface to do that. So if you've got a mop brush handy, um, I've got a really small one here. It's a quarter inch low Cornell, which this is a continue, discontinued brush, but if you have this size that's a, that's a good one for smaller stuff. So we're going to go in and I'm going to paint around the 
this circle, always keeping the paint to the outer edge of the grape and keeping it a little bit lighter in the middle. This particular one, anyway. I'm going to go with my bigger brush. And that looks like super duper crappy. So I am going to remove that because I'm going to have to do one edge at a time, it looks like. So let me try that again. Purple Rain is what we're using. So I'll just go along one edge. going to leave that there. We'll just have to do, because it's such a small circle, I can't go around the whole thing at one time. So we'll just take each grape one at a time and we'll shade on them. Goodness gracious, I'm just getting way too much water in my brush, so let me wipe some of that water out. It's a new day for me, and I haven't painted for about three days, so let me get back into it. Alright, so we're just going to keep loading that purple and going on one side of our grapes. I lost some shape here somehow. Don't have very much water in your brush. You, you need some to help it um, paint on there nicely, but you don't, when you're doing smaller things like this, you don't want a whole lot of uh, water in your brush because it will just uh, wash it away and thin it down more than you need it to be thinned down. back here is behind this one and this one kind of tucked underneath that leaf it's going to be a mostly dark grape and when I touch it with my finger it, it, I'm softening it and removing a little bit of the paint at the same time if I feel like it's gotten just a little bit heavy handed or too blotchy it kind of does the same thing that a mop brush does so, fingers are always great to use in painting. Now, right now we're keeping this more on the lower sides and the left. Something needs to be done here. Those grapes need to meet. This one's behind this leaf, so do the best you can getting that in there. Up on the up on the very tip of it when you're going around really tight areas. This one here is going to be mostly purple. You can't come back to it until that side is dry. So don't rush it if it's not dry. Okay. Kind of lost my shape there, but when I add my highlight, I'll put it back in. That's a pretty flat little grape there. Okay, and that was with uh, Purple Rain. So I want that to get completely dry. This is dry down here, so we're going to go to our next step down here. So we're going to take our... Um, I'm using a tin flat, by the way. You can use a, a bigger brush. Um, I think I'm going to put a little bit more of the burnt umber in here, a little bit darker. So make sure your brush has all the moisture out of it. And load up some glazing medium and then some burnt umber. And I'm just 
just going to bring this in a little bit here. A little bit darker. Over here. streak a little bit of it. I want it to be a little more streaky through here. Alright, grab some water and try and sprinkle it on there this time. Just load my brush with water and let a couple of drops come off on my paper towel or back into the water, either one. And then spatter it on there. And that one's running. We don't want that. Because I'm on a plate. If you're painting on a flat surface, you probably don't have to worry about that. And that's looking better. I like that better. here on my edges in my background because I really can't redo my background so I want to make sure I keep this clean out here. We'll shade around it later but for now we want it clean so dampen and a white eraser and a clean paper towel and just We can do the same thing up here on our fruit. Dampen our eraser and go up here and very lightly remove that brown off of there. Brush it away from our glazing medium. Okay, we're going to let that, that layer on the bowl dry. We can go work on our grapes some more. And I want to put that... Uh, purple rain on there another time. I want to make it a little bit wider on the grapes. I want it to fill the grape a little bit more. So we've got our highlight up here. You see my highlight, my circles have already been removed, but I remember where they were at. So. Just bring it a little bit more up into the grapes. That really could have been a highlighted edge, but since I'm putting my shadows more towards the bottom, I'll just leave it. Still working with purple rain here. And this grape actually is gonna be around, gonna be underneath that one, so try to reshape that. Try and go up underneath that leaf here in just a second. Let me do this one. Give that one time to dry. If you don't have very much water in your brush, it should dry down enough pretty quickly. But he's underneath this leaf, so he's got to be a little bit darker on that edge. So 
one. Well, we've already done. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Hopefully you were on camera for that because I didn't look up to make sure. So that was two coats of just purple rain on there. Um, I'm going to take a little bit, let me get a small round brush. A little bit of that purple rain. I might mix it with some dioxanine purple. And we're going to tuck some in around our grapes. We don't want to have any gaps back underneath. Actually, I might add a little bit of soft black to it. So let's take dioxanine purple and a little soft black or the um, purple rain and some soft black. It doesn't matter. Just one of the purples you need to add some, not the light color, but the, the darker purples. And tuck in. Just around some of the areas. Just in case, you know, our, our layers of paint don't cover. see if I can erase this purple out here. You can only do this while your uh, paint has not cured. If it's been setting for a couple of days, it's in there, so you can't remove it once that happens. Okay, let's... Um, bowl is dry so we can add another layer on the bowl here. Let me wide angle out just a little bit. Okay I'm first going to take a, a small round brush in that burnt umber, thin it down to inky consistency and I want to apply a little bit of graining in here. Some, just some lines in here. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to um, load my brush up this time with some glazing medium and some, um, I think we're going to do, uh, let's see, I've got soft black and blue mist out here. And I think I'm going to do the soft black next. So glazing medium in your brush, soft black in your brush. And we're going to come, I don't want to put as much of this in here. Glazing medium, soft black. Move quickly. We don't want it to dry before we can get some water on it. All right, sprinkle it with some water. let the water set for just you know a couple of seconds or, or more to let it really tack up that um, glazing medium and then when you go to remove it it will lift it off nicely so if you've got tons of water on there you might want to let it dry down just a little bit so you don't spread the water out and um, create 
a look that you don't want. I'm going to go ahead and put some soft black streaks in here and then it can all be drying together. Get my brush out of the water. I don't want to ruin my good brushes. looking pretty good. Okay. I think that looks good. We've got one more color we want to put on the bowl. We want it to get good and dry. So we can go back up here to our grapes. Now if you have completely lost your highlight, we're going to put it back in by drawing a circle. We're going to add some highlight in here before we do our um, darkest shading. So we're going to have the um, wild orchid, which was our base color, and some snow white, and a small little scumbling brush. So whatever is your favorite little brush to scumble some paint in with and make it look a little, a little textured. I'll try this one. This is a Simply Simmons Scumbler. I think I bought it in a package set at Hobby Lobby. I've had it for a few years, so I don't know if it still comes in, you know, a set. So the purple, which is our base color, and some white. We're just going to mix those two together. I just dipped into each one one time. Maybe I'll do two white. Two white and one wild orchid. Tap your um, paper towel to get the excess off of the tip of it. And we're going to tap this in where we put our circle. So we don't really need to draw our circle in here until... ready for. And the reason we're doing this before we do our darkest shading is because I know we're going to get some of this past, past our lines. Okay, I'm going to wipe the paint out and load just white in it this time. It's still got a little bit of that purple in it, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I just want to lighten up a little bit on here. A little bit more paint. Ooh, that was a lot of paint. And we're going to put a little bit of this in here. And that's going to be all of that. I'm going to wash this brush out. So the paint doesn't dry in it. We're going to add some dark shading on here now. Okay, on our grapes here, this is pretty dry, so we'll come back to this in just a minute. Um, we're going to make our darkest shading now. So I'm going to see if dioxanine purple by itself is enough. I might have to add some soft black in here. So go on the shaded edge. This is where you want to make sure that you shape your grapes very carefully so you can have nice round grapes and we can clean up all of our highlight edge. Just dioxanine purple.
This is a very transparent color. So you don't want to have tons of water in your oops, in your brush as you do this. This is where you can fix all of your shapes. It's mostly our shadings are, are going to try and stay mostly on the bottom and to the left sides but if some are moved or adjusted don't worry about it because it will all look great in the end So I can shape this one back up here. A little bit of that. I can shape this one back up here. And shape this one. back to this one and shade under here. I we'll need some dark in there because that's looking kind of funny. A little bit under here. Underneath this leaf here. kind of just look at it and see if you've missed any place that needs a little bit more. I'm going to take my base color and mix a little bit of the royal purple with it. Just a uh, Maybe a one-to-one -one mix. I'll see how this looks. But some of these edges need to be a little bit brighter. And I don't want the straight... Oops. I don't want the straight um, orchid color that we started with. But... Um, so two royal purple to one orchid think will do nicely. Oops. Paint on the wrong side of my brush, so wash it out and just reload. too much water here. That gray part right there, I just feel like it keeps losing its shape, so we'll just fix that. And then one of these needs to be on top, so I'm going to make this one on top, and I'm going to come back and put some dachshund purple there. Same here.
take the water edge of your brush and keep it out of the the shading area. All right, I'm going to mix some uh, Dachshundine purple and soft black. Let me get some fresh soft black out here. Okay, so I'm just going to dip into my Dachshundine purple and dip into my soft black. And Dachshund purple again, so two Dachshund purple, one soft black. And we're just going to put this in some really dark areas. So right down in here will be a little bit darker. Down in here, all these little V kind of areas where one lays on top of another. Those are really dark areas. So just brush mix your paint. Down here will be darker. Right next to our pears will be a little bit darker. I don't want to make that great black, but it is really tucked underneath there, so. You're just picking and choosing what places you feel like needs to be darker. This is also going to help you shape up your grapes a little bit better, too. And I see a place that needs some. Right here, we got to determine what grape is what here. It's kind of hard to tell which one's on top, which one's not. Do some shaping up. in my brush. Right here. That should really darken those up nicely. And before we add our brightest highlight on here, let's glaze over them with some Dachshund Purple. So I'm gonna dip my paintbrush into water, dip it into my paint, and just come out here and mix a wash of Dachshund Purple. So we're just tinting some water. It's gonna be mostly water. You could do this with a cranberry wine. You can do it with, um, oh, you, could, you could maybe even put some cherry red on here. I think I might just add a, a little bit of cranberry wine on here before we add some washes. We'll just give these grapes a little red tint to them. So we are going to just Create a little wash of cranberry wine. Not maybe quite as thin as what we made this over here. We'll make it just a little bit thicker. I'm going to wash my brush out, get the excess water out, and then I'm just going to load up this paint on one edge of my brush right here. And we can just pick some of these to put this on. And then we'll need to let it dry completely. Might get just a little bit more paint in that mix. So we can have a little bit of variation in our grapes. You can make your grapes green if you wanted. Okay, maybe just a touch more paint. I really, if 
I'm going to put cranberry wine on here. I really want it to show up, so. I think that'll be pretty good. I put it mostly in the, the dark areas. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think you can see those ones that have some cranberry wine on them. Okay, we're going to let these dry before we wash over them and add our brightest highlight. We're going to go um, work on the bowl some more. So I've got a, a damp brush, but I want all the moisture out of it. Don't um, keep it full of water. Load some glazing medium and some blue mist. I'm going to remove a lot of the paint over here on my paper towel. Pick up a little bit more glazing medium and blend it in on my brush. And now we're going to put some of this in here and this is going to give it a little bit more of a an aged look. Make sure you've got plenty of glazing medium on your brush. You want to keep this really, really wet. All right, spatter some water. This is going to make the bowl look a little more old and worn. If you don't like this color once you put it on here, or like this color after you see me do it, then you do not have to do this color. You, you do whatever colors you want on yours. Use cocoa on here to make it a lighter bowl. pick up a lot of water make sure you go to a dry spot on your paper towel and, and or your sponge and continue on that way you're not picking up more paint off of this than you want to pick up Need a little, ooh, that's a lot of water Need a little water there Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do to the bowl till we're ready to shade it. Because um, we're done adding the layers on there so we can be done with our sponge. And our grapes are dry so let's go wash over them with some Dachshund Purple. And we will add our brightest highlight on here. create a bright highlight on our grapes now. So I've got a one round brush. I'm going to load it with some Snow White. I am going to whew, lay some water in. Tap, tap, tap. Let it disperse. Or gently mop it. It's going to fade down in there because we've got that water underneath it. So water first, paint, and a little tap if you need it. Water, paint, Tap, tap, tap. Water. Paint. And that one I'm not going to tap because it's a very small highlight and I think it's going to disperse quite well. And I think it's 
time to get a little bit more water in my brush. Water. Paint. Tap, tap, tap. Water. Paint. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, brush. <laughs> brushes in my hand. Okay, I think that's pretty good. See how these are already, just, you know, kind of shake, going back down in there. This one not so much because it, it, um, had a lot of paint on it and I just removed it with my finger. So, Try that again. Made a little hole in that one. Alright, so that happens. Let me show you what to do. If you've tapped it too much and made a hole in it, you can re-dampen it. Take a white eraser and remove it. And then just re-tap it. I kind of like that a little bit more muted highlight on there. So now I'm going to side load my flat brush and create just a little bit of a sparkle on here. Trying to highlight the edge I think I'll leave that off. I don't like it. After I put it on there, I don't like it. So just a damp brush. Quickly remove. And I think I'll just brighten a couple of the highlights. Like this one. Okay, and, and any time that you get your highlight whiter than you want, just take that mix of um, Wild Orchid and Purple Rain, the two Purple Rain, one Wild Orchid, and tap some in around it. And then you can um, reduce that highlight just a little bit. So, um, let me show you what I mean. So like this one, I feel like it's just a little bit bigger than what I want, and we'll just tap it in, and we'll just take a little bit of it down. The size of it down, not to... So any of them that you feel got a little bit too, too big, that's all you have to do to bring it back to the size of highlight that you want it to be. I think that's going to finish out our grapes. Once we finish out everything else on here, we'll come back and do our leaves when we do our other leaves and our stems when we do all of our stems because all the stems and the leaves are going to be done with the same colors. So we're not going to worry too much about uh, those yet. They'll be done at the end. But I think our grapes are done. So I'm going to leave those alone for now till we get the other fruits painted in. So, you know, I might have to come back and shade right next to here to just darken and push them down in a little bit. But we're good right now on the grapes. Okay, let's finish out our bowl down here. Um, the first thing I want to do is take some soft black with a small round brush. And we're going to tuck in. Oh, I think that's purple. Soft black. So, soft black. I'm 
might have been soft black, but I think it had some purple mixed in with it. So we want to go around our cherries here. And we'll just darken inside the bowl here. Right here at this edge, we'll put a little bit. And back here. Put some soft black. And right here, well actually right there. I might make that yellow the pear color. So we're going to load for a float here and we are going to float some soft black. So that means you dampen your brush, get the excess water out, load a little bit of uh, paint on one corner of the toe of the brush. Depending on what kind of brush you're using, you're still just going to use one side of it. And then we're going to darken on this edge. And we'll go along the bottom here. This is soft black. Our fruits here and if you have difficulty floating all you know big areas like this and can't keep enough moisture in your brush you can pre dampen the area all right I'm just going to take it up to there I don't want it to go all the way up to that edge I want that to be our lighter edge but I want to create a um, thickness in this bowl so I'm going to um, Draw a line along this edge. Oops. Try and keep it fairly straight here. I want to give the bit, the bowl a little bit of depth. So I'm going to float underneath that edge right there. This is really going to help make our bowl look like it's a thick wood bowl. Oh, here I am on camera. Let me wide angle out so I can get the whole bowl in here. I'm up on the tippy toe here. And I want that to be just a little bit more flat. Not so curved out right there. Okay, let me erase that uh, line that I drew in there, or that double line I drew. that I got on there, that uh, blue mist paint, I got it up that high, so can't erase that. We'll just paint some other color over it here in a minute. So our, um, we want to put a little bit of this color along the 
along this back edge. I'm really up on the edge of the brush here. I don't have very much paint in my brush. Try and keep it straight. It is a wooden bowl, so it can have a little bit of character going on with it. And we got kind of a, a lip there on, on that bowl. Now we're going to come back and highlight on that. Get all my eraser stuff off of here. All right, I'm testing a mix here of cocoa and burnt umber to see if I'm going to like it for a highlight. We got two burnt umbers to one cocoa, but you can adjust that for how dark your design is. I'm going to streak a little bit of it through here. Not too much of it. And then I'm going to get my round brush and load up with that mix. And paint along this top edge right here. back and remove a little bit of it back here because I want to keep that little bit of dark that we painted in right there. Okay, then I'm going to tip into some cocoa and just streak a little bit of cocoa along this edge. This edge. I'm just using a round brush here. I'm going to soften out that paint wasn't quite as wet in my brush as I wanted it to be, so let's just soften that. I'm going to darken down at the bottom one more time with the soft black. Then I think I'll leave this until we are done with the rest of the fruit. And see where we need to go. bring this out on this side a little bit more so it can definitely look like it's the shaded side. That looks pretty good for our bowl. We're going to leave it there for now. I, I know it needs a brighter highlight on there, but I'm going to wait till I get down with some of the fruit so I can see what color I want to put on there for the highlight. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it with the... Uh, we did the cocoa and burnt umber, two burnt umber to one cocoa, and then we did straight cocoa just along that center edge and right here. Okay, let's move on to... A piece of our fruit now. Um, okay, so um, I've been looking at my design here and I've decided to make this one the green apple, I think. So I'm going to change the color of it. I'm going to go ahead and get it based in with a green. And this is aloe.
So I'm just going to get a quick, hopefully just one coat on here since that yellow was underneath it. One coat may be all I need here and let it dry and then we'll get started on this one. Okay, I've got my apple green now, so let's zoom in here. And we're going to begin working on this little guy. So we're going to begin our uh, initial shading with um, avocado. And if this is going to be a pretty good size area that we're going to be shading in here. So we're going to be doing the side down here down through here. Most of that's going to be shaded. So um, if you have a hard time floating large areas, then um, pre-dampen it. I'm going to a much larger brush now. I thought I had a half inch, but I grabbed a 16, so this might end up being too big. So we're just going to begin with some soft floats here. that so I can gently blend it. Clean my mop brush and put a little bit of this down in here. Oops, I can have it come out a little bit. I'm going to go to a little bit smaller brush. I'm going to go to a half inch. That's what I thought I grabbed, but that's a 16 and I don't want to be using a brush quite that big. Now if you're using an angle brush you can go to a 5 8 or half inch. Um, 3 8 maybe. I remember I don't have very many angle brushes so I'm not really sure on the sizes exactly. I know I have a 5 8 inch one and a half inch one. So whatever is going to work in the area for what you're painting with. I'm going to pick up uh, that brush and um, I want to pull some, some lines into the apple. Now you want to make sure that it, it sh follows the shape of the apple. And we don't want to put it in our highlight. Our highlight's going to be through here and probably a little bit on that edge. So we want to just kind of keep them thin. If you can't keep them thin using the chisel edge of your brush, then um, go to a detail liner and do it with a, a detail liner. So, just pull some of those up in there. And I'm not going to do that side because it's getting a little precarious there. Okay, I'm going to refloat that shading. You want to make sure that the one that the previous one that you put on is dry before you add another layer on here. That's a V, so we're, we kind of push the paint down into it and round it so it follows the shape. And I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit of this up on this edge. sure I cover all those lines that I put in there with that shading color. I don't want them to be um, like in the highlight area. Alright, so I'm going to grab some olive green and we're going to add a little bit of a highlight on here. I'm going to mix the olive green with our base color which is aloe. So I'm just going to do a one-to-one. -one and see how that works out. I'm going to highlight along this edge and kind of bring it down a little bit over to this edge. I'm going to have some along here. And I'm going to bring it down just 
just a scooch. I don't want to bring it down to the uh, lines, but I want to bring it down into that area a little bit. This was a one-to-one -one mix of aloe and olive green. Okay, we're starting a real pretty highlight on there. We're going to deepen our shading next. So we're going to take our avocado and a little bit of soft black. Not too much. We don't want our green to turn black but we do want it to be a darker green so you're just gonna make like a, a dirty green color and we're gonna bring this back here this is our deepest areas and right along here I'm going to grab a little bit, I'm going to wash my brush out and grab a little bit more of that avocado and work a little bit more of that into my brush. I kind of want these two to meet a little bit better, so just tap some of that in there. Some of that dark green can go right down in here. We'll, we'll deep. We'll really set that dark when we add the stem in there, but um, that's kind of going to get us where we need to go there. And now we're going to brighten up our highlights. We're going to use olive green. And I think I'm going to let that dry. I think I'm going to create a wash of olive green because I really want this apple to be much brighter green. So I'm going to create a wash. Remember, it's just tinted water. And I'm going to wash over. Take my mop brush and mop and blend and smooth out. Maybe keep it not quite so much into the uh, shaded area down there. That was some avocado there. I really lost my deep shading. So when you wash wash that in, just work it up that way and gently blend it out. And you can add a little bit of avocado to it to um, make sure that it doesn't have too hard of a, a contrast there. That was, that was that darker mix right that I did right there. Okay, let's create a really bright highlight on here. Get some Snow White out. Now, your mop brush, keep it clean in between moppings. You gotta go to a damp place on your paper towel and clean it out. Get the paint out that you just mopped. And then you have to go to a dry spot or a dry paper towel and dry it off. And then check it, make sure you've got all the paint off. If not, give it another little scrub, not in wet paint on your paper towel. Make sure it's just a, 
a wet spot on your paper towel and then we clean it out so we, we don't transfer paint all over our project. Okay, we're going to start making a brighter float. We're going to take olive green and snow white and mix them together. And I want a bright highlight right here. So I'm just going to tap some of that in. Got a bristle there. I'm going to tap it in. Now if you can't do this with um that bristle out of there with a brush with water and paint in it then dampen it first and then apply your paint and kind of tap it in there and put a little bit up here just barely laying down any paint in there. The very softest of tickling is all I'm doing there. My apple kind of lost its shape over here on this edge. Okay, and that was with a mix of white and olive green. I'm just going to pick up some white. I still got a little bit of that green in my brush. I did not wash my brush, but I do need to pick up some water. Make sure you're dry. Go back in here with a bright white highlight. Just very softly and gently lay some in here. I'm going to do another little just kind of washing have some olive green up through here. Oops. Drying too fast. Let me dampen that edge. Mop that out. highlight down just a little bit. I've got a mix of avocado and olive green in here. I'm going to take my just white on my brush. I wash my brush out. And I kind of want to get some shape on this. I don't, I don't want so much uh, white right there. I'm going to pull this one out a little bit. let that set until we do the other fruit and see if I need to come back and adjust on some of the values on that apple and we'll see how it's going to look at the end. We'll 
add our stem back in at the end. Let's go ahead and darken right there just a tiny bit with some soft black. We will definitely darken that after we put our stem in, but that's kind of going to help us a little bit right there. And I really think... Um, yeah, I'm going to put some avocado and olive green mix just along this edge right here. I don't want it to be quite so bright right there. There, that looks much better. I like that. Alright, so anywhere you feel like you need to add a little bit of green back in there. This is just the avocado and olive green mix. So if you want to brighten up some areas, you can do that. Take the water edge and just blend it out. We want to we definitely want a Granny Smith apple here, so let's not let's not make it super dark. Okay, I'm gonna wide angle out a little bit more perspective, and I think that green apple looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the pear next, and then we'll do the red apple. I'm just going to do the fruit in the bowl minus this apple because this, or this pear, this pear will be done exactly like this apple. This fruit down here will be done the same as this fruit. So I'm just going to finish one set or item of each in the bowl so that the video is not like five hours long. So um, I'm going to move to the pear next and then the apple. Then we'll come down here and do all these smaller fruits down here. Oh, it's looking good. Okay, before we move on to the other fruit, I decided to add a little bit of the blue mist up on this edge here because um, I felt like it just needed something. So we'll just put some of that in there. I might darken some of this up down here just a scooch. Just put a little bit on there and take the water into my brush and kind of smooth it out. I like the, the blue mist as a highlight a little bit better, I think. You can put a little cocoa on there first and then the blue mist on top of it. And I think that will be a very pretty very pretty edge for a bowl. Again, I might come back and add some more colors as I as I build on everything because I feel like that edge needs just a little bit of a brighter white color now. I think a little bit of white along this front edge will help. And I'm going to bring it all the way over here. That's the bright edge of our bowl.
that's a little bit too hard of a hard, too much of a hard line there. Eraser. Okay, I'm gonna leave the bowl because I really feel like it needs something else. Maybe we'll float some reds in there when we get done. Give it a little bit of a red tint. That might look nice. So, I'm going to leave the bowl there. The green apple's done. The grapes are done. So, here we go. Let's start on the pear. Okay, we're going to start on our pear now. Let me zoom you in just a little bit. And I'm just going to complete this one. This one will be done the exact same way. Um, just be aware of where your highlight is. Um, I wanted to mention I need to go back on my grapes and reshape some of the edges were a little bit unshapen or misshapen. So I went in with the mix of um, Purple Rain and Wild Orchid and just cleaned up those edges a little bit. So if your grapes got out of shape, I did notice when I came back to it this morning that a couple of them were misshapen. So that's all I did to straighten them out was to um, float that along the highlight edge and uh, reshape them. All right, we're going to take some antique gold here and load a large brush for floating, whatever kind of brush you like to use, either a, a flat or a angle brush. And we're going to start adding some antique gold onto our pair. I'm going to try and stay off of those blueberries, but if I can't, I will just come back in and repaint them. Go around. We're going to walk this color all the way up the pear, staying out of the highlight area. My circle is there and there, so I'm going to stay out of those areas. And I want to make sure I've stayed out of my highlight areas, so I'm going to take the damp edge of the, the brush and remove that paint. So we have this little, like, dimple almost thing there. So we're going to come from both sides of that and just bring it into a V and then just fill that in. creating that little bit of a, a dimple in our pear there by doing that. I'm going to get a round brush and tuck some of that in down here. We'll probably end up making that mostly dark. So try to stay off my bowl since I have it done. I'm going to take some uh, cad yellow and white and start just kind of creating the highlight there so I can define it a little bit better and see where I'm going. So I'm going to take a smaller flat brush, an eight, and mix snow white and cad yellow. Just a one to one mix here. We'll see if this is bright enough to add our highlight back in here. Just kind of tap some of that in there. Smooth it out with a water edge. Just kind of just kind of bring that highlight back in there. Okay, let's add some little spots on our pear. We're going to take some burnt umber and just tab in some little character areas here. And these don't have to be great big, so, or cover the whole thing. I'm going to put a little bit more down 
along the bottom edge of it. good. So th that's what we're going to do with some burnt umber. Okay, we're going to refloat the antique gold right over those speckles. That kind of pushes them down into the pear. And makes them look like more like part of the pear as opposed to sitting on top here in our V. Let's add some of this. You might want to go to a smaller brush here. Up here where our stem will come. Okay, it's still just the antique gold there. a dirty brush. I did not clean my brush. I'm going to dirty brush right into, if you've got a lot of uh, antique gold still on your brush, just wipe it off. And then just go pick up burnt umber and work that into your brush. And we're going to add a little bit of this in here. A little bit darker shadow area. here in our V. And in our little stem area. We'll need some down here. That's looking pretty good for our pear. I want to brighten up the highlight and add some washes of colors on here. So uh, I'm going to go back to the cad yellow and snow white. This time I'll do two snow white and one cad yellow. And we're going to put it in our highlight section. I'm just going to tap some of the paint in there and take the water edge of my brush and kind of soften that out. Same thing up here. Tap some in, water edge, kind of soften it out. We'll put a little bit of a highlight here and a little bit here. let that dry and we're going to brighten it. But while that dries, I washed out my brush. I'm going to load just burnt umber on my brush. And this area down in here I want to be just a little bit darker. side of the brush. I want to wash that off there so I don't have to paint that back in. I'm going to have to paint that one in. No doubt there. And tuck a little bit of burnt umber down in here. More back down in here. 
definitely down in here. I might have burnt umber on both sides of my brush there. Clean that off. Okay, I need to reshape this strawberry just a little bit. Just by using some burnt umber. smaller brush back down to my eight we're gonna go with some white and brighten our highlight here so I'm gonna tap some in and then take the water edge kind of smooth it out a little bit there a little bit there a little bit there and then do this highlight way just a little bit to give that a little bit more of a round look. I don't want it to look cut in half, so. Get my antique gold. I want to clean up this edge a little bit. It's just whatever antique gold is left on my brush. Just kind of tap some in there. And I think that will finish our... Well, no, I wanted to put a little tinting of color on here. So you can choose to do this or not. It depends on what you want your pear to look like. So I am going to put a little bit of... Um, Scarlet. See how this looks. I'm really going to thin it down with some water in my brush, but I'm still just side loaded, so I've got it <clears throat> pretty thin here. But I've still just got it on one edge of my brush so I can have the water on the other edge. So let's put some tints on here, maybe up here. very softly. I don't have to do a whole lot here. Soften that water edge just a little bit. And we can come back and darken that if we need to. I don't want it too much darker than what it is. got the lightest of colors in your brush. It's, it's better to build up the layers than to, um, you know, have them too bright at first. So I think that'll be good enough until we get the other fruit done to see if I want to um, add some color in here. I might put some reflective greens on here. So let's see. I'm not sure which green will show up here. Olive green might be too bright. So I'll get a little wash of it. I mean, there are there is green in pairs, so you can some green spots in here if you want. I think that uh, that looks nice. It's a little more realistic to me. 
Need a little green in there because my pears always have some green on them, my yellow ones. At least the ones I buy at the store. Okay, so that, that looks really good. I think we're going to leave the pear there. This one's going to be done the exact same way, so we're going to move on to our red apple now. Okay, my other pear is done, so we're going to move to this apple, and um, let me zoom in and see if you can see where I've drawn these highlights. So I've got a highlight there, and then right here, this area that goes down into the apple, we're going to keep those areas, try to keep those areas yellow, the yellow that we base coated in here. So we're going to start with scarlet, and we're going to side load a nice sheer color, so you will have water in your brush and you'll get a nice soft color if you need water. Go down here to where you spritzed your water and grab a little bit more. That might be just a tad t too much, so I'll just wipe off a paper towel, get the excess water out, and go right here. Light layers is much better than dark layers, so we're going to just start creating our color on here. Go around your blueberries. And we're going to work this color all the way around this apple, staying out of our highlight areas. got water on my brush so I'm able to move that paint a little bit and we'll have a little bit on this back edge back here and it looks pretty choppy and pretty ugly right now but um, as we build our layers it's going to come back into a beautiful red apple so let's let this layer get good and dry I think we're dry. I think I'm going to move down to a smaller brush here. I had a 12. I'm going to move down to a 10. Now this time we want to mix um, Scarlet and Santa Red. So I'm just going to pick up both on my brush, an equal mix here. And first let's create some lines or some streaking. Do it with the edge of your brush. If you are unable to do it with the edge of your brush, then um, get a detail liner and just add some fine little lines in there. Okay. They should just take a moment to dry. Go back and load up equal amounts of your two colors, your um, Santa Red and Scarlet. going to get our second layer on here. Stay out of the highlight area. By keeping the water edge um, next to the highlight area, we can keep that paint out of there. And along the back edge back here. So that's our second layer on there, our little streaking and our second layer with the equal mix. Okay, let's go with just Santa Red this time. On our brush. Again, we're going to stay out of the highlight area.
by making sure the water edge is towards that highlight side when you get to your your areas that you want to keep light. And this is going to begin smoothing out our apple a little bit. We really don't want our streaks to be in our highlight area, so I'm going to take our base color, which was moon yellow, and tap a little bit of that in there. See if we can cover up those red lines. Maybe add a little bit of white here. We don't really want our lines to be in our highlight. So let me take that off because I don't like that white in there right now. I'll try again with the yellow. Moon yellow is what we based these with. So I'm just going to tap some in there and then just kind of work it out a little bit. And I'll come back and repeat because I want um, I want that to be uh, no lines in there. So when you're painting your lines in, try not to let them come up into the highlight area. Okay, let's go with some alizarin crimson and a little bit of Santa Red mixed together. getting some nice smoothness in our layers here. Okay, that was Alizarin Crimson and Santa Red. Okay, now we want to go just in the darkest areas, so we're going to take some soft black and alizarin crimson and mix them together and just create a dark red. And you could probably use the cranberry wine too if you wanted to. hope I've been keeping you on camera for this because sometimes I really forget to look up and see what I'm doing. <laughs> Make sure I'm in the camera shot so don't hate me. I'll just put this a little bit in our darkest areas. Alizarin Crimson with a little bit of soft black. Just dirty up or darken up that alizarin. Let's go up underneath this leaf. Actually, let's side of it. Oops, not on camera. Sorry. I hope you've been on camera for this apple because I am so sorry I have not been looking up like I should. Alright, I'm going to mix a little bit more on that on my brush. It's just a uh, probably two soft black to one red. Really you're just darkening the red so it may not you may not need that much soft black in there so just a 
just going to skim over a little bit. That's good. All right, let's brighten our highlight. Okay, we're going to do that with some cat yellow and white mixed. So do a two to one, two cat yellow to one snow white. And again, we're just going to kind of tap that in there. Let it blend out here as well. I can put a little bit of this right here for a, oops, a little bit more of a highlight on that very edge right there. Okay, and then we'll come back and repeat it with just white to brighten to make sure that's dry before we paint on there. Get tuck just a little bit of white in there, not too much. Because we're gonna have our stem in there, it's not going to uh, be too awful bright there. Right here we want to add a little bit. So I'm up on the tippy toe, I'm tapping some of this in here. Now I'm just going to take the water edge of my brush and go around to the outer edge of that white and just gently soften it. Wipe my brush off and come back. I want to remove a little bit of it. And give us our bright, bright highlight right there. And I think that might finish up our apple, except I really feel like I need to bring some color back up here just a little bit, kind of blend it a little bit more. So I'm going to take the, the scarlet and a little bit of Santa Red and tap that in there. I feel like I've got too hard of a too hard of an edge right there. Right in here. So we just want to kind of not put paint on both sides of our brush, but we just want to um, Trying to mix up a little bit of the soft black and the red here. I'm going to darken underneath this leaf. have this little hard line that I'm having a hard time with. <laughs> Oops. I don't want red in our highlight. Take that out. Okay, that's better. I just kind of scumbled a little bit of, of Santa red right there. Kind of took that edge of that highlight down. It was just bugging me a little bit. Probably looked fine to you guys, but 
for me it was just uh, too harsh of a line. So let me wide angle out and see the fruit that we have done. Okay, um, I think we will work on the cherries next and get them done maybe. And then we'll do strawberries and blueberries. Oh, that's looking good. It's coming along. I really feel like my highlight on here needs to be brighter. So let me take some cat yellow and a little bit of that olive green and mix them together. And I'm going to brighten around this highlight with that mix. So maybe the white isn't quite so stark. And there we go. I think that that helped a lot. So that was the olive green and cat yellow. Just kind of wash some of that in there. Scumble it in just to kind of tint it down a little bit and not make it quite so uh, so hard. When you start getting other elements done in your project, you can you can kind of go back and you can kind of look at it and see that oh, okay, that one needs a little bit more. This one maybe needs a little bit more. So um, those are ways that you can um, really um, see what your design needs. This is just cad yellow right next to that highlight. And I'll put a little bit out here. All right, let's get ready to move on to the cherries. Okay, our fruit is looking so delicious. So I said we were gonna go to our cherries, but I think I'm actually gonna work my way across the front here. So we're gonna start with the blueberries. So I'm gonna zoom you in. Hopefully I'll keep you on camera here. We're gonna start shading our blueberries with ultramarine blue. Use a smaller brush here, a quarter inch angle. I'm using an eight flat. Shade on this is a pretty transparent color so it, uh, it paints a little bit differently than some of our other paints. So I'm going to take my mop brush and soften that out. This will probably be critical to have some type of mop brush for this I'm just going to finish the three up here in the bowl, and uh, then we'll go, I'll go off camera and finish the ones on the bottom. So, just very, very gently mop that. It's going to look not the best with our first layer here. Kind of pull it up into the, the blueberry a little bit. Shape this one. All right, so if it's dry, we can go back and repeat a little bit of water on my brush. I don't want tons of water, but I, I need a little bit of water so I can move this paint since it is such a sheer paint. And that circle I drew on there is not for where our stem is going to be. It's going to be for our highlight.
tap that in there. Mop brush, soften it. That one still needs a little bit of work there. I'm going to darken up here on this edge a little bit. So we'll have a highlight edge there and a highlight edge there. And we'll be dark at the bottom and the top. I'm going to start adding a little highlight in here and I'm going to take a three round brush and I'm going to dip into our base color which is periwinkle and snow white and mix them together maybe two snow whites to one periwinkle a little bit lighter color and we just want to start tapping our highlight in here taking a damp brush and kind of, ooh, that's a really wet brush, and softening out the edges. that again. So dab some in here. Woo! Throw your paintbrush across your piece and just kind of blot and dab the edges. You can add a little bit more white to the mix if you need it a little bit brighter. on there. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off and just pick up the straight periwinkle and kind of dab that in, in here. Wipe my brush off and then come back and just kind of blend those together. Blueberries have a little bit of a textured look to them, so um, they can be a little bit more choppy looking when we paint them, so we can have that little bit of white stuff that's on them. Okay, so I want to do the same type of technique with a little bit darker shading, but I'm going to dampen this one first. And I'm going to go into ultramarine blue and soft black and blend them together. And this is really going to darken up that blue, and I'm going to tap it in here, and then I'm going to take my brush and just kind of blend that out. I want, I really want my blueberries to be more textury and um, not so much smooth. So this is going to help keep them a little bit more on that textured side by just tapping this in and tape, taking our damp brush. It's almost like floating, but I'm keeping it very textury here. Just by tapping in this color. Some down here. Just do a little area at a time so your paint doesn't start drying on you. A little bit too much water there on my brush. So I'm going to put a little bit more of this in here. I'm 
want to put a little bit along this edge. We want to keep our shape, so make sure you keep it round. Don't let it get in your highlight area. So I kind of feel like this edge needs a little bit of attention here. I've done blueberries many different ways, so there are really however you like to paint your blueberries. And if you've watched any of my other fruit videos and you like the way I did it on a different one, then you can do it that way. Alright, wet brush or damp brush. I don't want it sopping wet. That's a little wet. A little bit up here on the top. We'll use the same mix when we get ready to add our little stem center in here. All right. So I think I think we've got it pretty good start for our texture here. I really feel like there is a super hard line right there I don't like. Okay, that's a good start to getting our texture on our blueberries. We're going to let that dry and we're going to start brightening our highlight a little bit. All right, let's brighten our highlight on here. We're going to take our Snow White and add a tiny little bit of the periwinkle in there. And we'll start, we're going to float this. We're going to float on this edge. Here we'll have a little bit. Wipe. I just wiped the paint off my brush. I had a little bit too much on there and it was going crazy. And this edge. I'm going to redo this edge here. Bring it in by just pulling the paint in. I'm just repeating. You can add a little bit more white on in here when you add your second little layer if you want to. We're going to come back. Oh, I might add a little bit too much white there, but We're going to come back with just Snow White here in a minute. Right now we're just using the mix of Snow White and Periwinkle. Probably two Snow White to one Periwinkle. It really, it might be three Snow White because you're just putting a tiny little bit of the um, Periwinkle in there because we want to keep it light and bright. Need to bring that edge down just a scoochy scooch. Okay, and then we're just going to do Snow White to brighten that, and then we're going to add our stem center in here. So I just want to keep this right on the very edge. I don't want to bring that in. Just right on the edge. You don't have to cover the whole edge, just give give our bright. 
little edge there. We don't have to go back here and do that because that's kind of back more in the uh, shadow. You want to put a little bit more here. Okay, let's deepen the shading with some soft black. We're going to float this. We want it to work it into your brush to get it sheer. So we don't have any really dark stuff or hard lines going on here. Really, really work it into your brush with that water. And that's the only way you're going to get it a soft color is to work it into your brush, but you have to have the water in your brush. Okay, let's just add some of this back here. And just our dark areas. I'll come back and do the bottom edge of that one. here because the paint is so sheer it's going to dry very quickly in your brush and on your project okay that's got some nice dark areas I'm going to take a little bit of periwinkle and ultramarine mix here I kind of need to work a little bit of this out We don't need to have that highlight come over quite so far. We just want it to be a little speck of a highlight over there. So we just kind of take that back a scooch. A little bit more ultramarine blue down in here in this one. Really keep it pity pat texture. Don't try to smooth it out. Um, that's going to give you the best look if you try not to smooth it out. Okay, we're going to get ready to add our stem areas in here. Right, so to create our uh, little stem area, we're going to mix the soft black and ultramarine blue. Get a really dark blue color. And you can make a star symbol in here if you want. I just kind of wiggle it and get a little jagged area going on in there. So it's not uh, perfect. They are kind of shaped a little bit more starry kind of shaped. And one up here. And we'll have to let this dry and repeat it. just our where it kind of grew on the I don't know do they grow on vines I think they grow on vines like strawberries do I love to paint fruit but I don't know a whole lot about how they grow I know apples and pears grow on trees grapes grow on vines strawberries on vines okay so that's got um, that in there and the only other thing you need to do to these and they should go pretty quickly. You shouldn't have to um, really mess with them a whole lot. Just kind of tap the paint in there and, um, you know, keep it blotchy. We, we want to keep it textury looking. Um, I'm going to take some uh, Snow White and just kind of tip the edges of the highlight side. Thin my paint down a little bit so it will flow off of my brush still not flowing and just a little bit where maybe a highlight is going to hit the edge of this we don't uh, don't do the whole thing and don't fill it in like I just did there <laughs> kind of got into my center area here but just a little bit of a highlight so we can determine the edge a little bit. That one will have the most on it than the other two, so 
I think those look pretty good. Maybe tap a little bit of Snow White in our brightest areas. For our brightest highlight, I'm going to pick up a little bit of water so I can move that a little bit. pretty good. Just a little tapping, dabbing of the figure. Tap it in there, dab with the finger, and that's going to soften it back down in there to where you don't have to worry about it. And then we can go in and erase any graphite lines. A white line right there kind of bugs me. So graphite lines where I drew my centers in. We'll just erase those and that will finish out the um, blueberries. I think they look great. I'm going to go down and finish the ones down here the exact same way. Alright, we're going to work on this strawberry up here. <clears throat> I painted this one in to do some test colors because I don't want all my reds to become the same uh, color of red. So I'm going to start with uh, some different colors than I normally do. Now, um, this one is going to have a highlight right about in here. So we want to try and stay out of that area just like we did over here with the tomato. So we're going to start <clears throat> by floating on some uh, dried clay, which is the color we put down here in the uh, bowl. So we're going to take this all the way around our strawberry. Staying out of our highlight area. And I'm going to mop that. Take a little bit of water and knock that paint off of there just a little bit. Keep our highlight. We want to keep our highlight right there. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to repeat that same color. It's pretty dry now. So, oops, way too much water in my brush, so let me wipe that out. Load my brush up, and we're going to do this again with the same color, because we really want this color to be strong underneath our other colors. This is going to help our layers out. Okay, so that is dried clay. Our second color on here is going to be scarlet. And um, we're going to add this color on here. Work a little bit into our brush. Grab some water. And we're going to repeat this with this scarlet color. And it's a little bit of an orange color. And I like that a lot for my strawberries. It's a new color, so it might be my new favorite strawberry color. So we're going to be building our layers on here. So don't stress out about, you know, anything about how it looks now or anything. Because we're going to get to this right here. Okay, I'm going to add our seeds in right now. And our seeds are going to be a mix of uh, cadmium red and soft black and you're just going to make like a dirty like a dirty red color there and a little bit more soft black and we want to oh that might be too much let me grab a little bit more red mix that in so just mix it well and then get some water in your liner brush, thin it down, pull it out so you can have a nice tip on here. And we're going to put some seeds in here, just some little dots, well, maybe some little dots of seeds. Well, I keep saying I'm going to put seeds in there. The paint needs to be a little bit thinner. It's got to be inky consistency for it to come off of your brush. I'm going to put these first in the darker areas of my strawberry because I don't want them 
very dark in there and I'm going to wipe the tip off and just put light ones in here and hopefully you're on camera for that so just a few little shade uh, seeds these down here look like they might have been just a touch darker so might go in and darken some of these try to go back directly on the seeds that I put in before wipe my brush off and I can go back into my highlight area okay that looks a little bit better we can see our seeds a little bit stronger now okay we're gonna start adding uh, start doing some shading here and we're gonna start with um, cadmium red don't want to bring this out as far as we did our first color there, or our scarlet. I want to try and keep some of that orange look in there. Although in this strawberry, I feel like I'm really filling that in. I'm going to tap where my center highlight is because I don't want it to... Uh, get carried away. Um, I'm going to go in right now and just brighten the highlight a little bit by mixing an equal mix of moon yellow and snow white. And I'm just going to kind of tap this in here. Take the water edge and smooth it out like we've done on our other highlights. And that's going to bring that one a little bit more forward. And then we're going to take our cat red and soft black and mix them just a little bit of soft black just darken up that red we don't want it to turn black and we're going to darken up our strawberry here just you're just doing a little bit here don't uh, do a whole lot I'm going to quickly dry that go into some soft black work it into my brush with some water because I don't want it to be uh, super super dark and make the darker edge of the strawberry and down here next to the bowl needs to be darker Okay, before we brighten up our highlight, we're going to wash over the uh, strawberry with some Santa Red. Now, normally I wash over with Cherry Red, but I'm washing over with some Santa Red. Just a very sheer color of this, so it's mostly water. The tinted water like we did up on the grapes. And speaking of the grapes, I did go back and add a little bit of... Um, Santa red on there maybe I think those two are looking very similar in color so let me add a little bit more of the Santa red I'm gonna brighten up the highlight with some white and yellow mix so it's two whites and one moon yellow Just tap some of that in there. And I think I might put a little bit of a highlight on this edge out here. So speaking of my grapes a while ago, I went back in and um, floated a little bit of alizarin crimson in 
on, on some of my grapes and I think that really helped the color pop out a little bit more. The cranberry wine was kind of pushing the colors back down in there more than I wanted so I went back with the alizarin crimson. So I have that in my instructions that you can do either one or you can do none. You can just keep them purple. But um, I think the alizarin crimson really really popped that out a little bit more. Okay, I want to deepen this side just a little bit. So I'm going to take Santa Red and Soft Black. Get this a little bit deeper over here. There we go, that looks much better. And then your final bright highlight will be just uh, Snow White. A little tapping of Snow White in here. And if it ends up fading back in there, you can uh, come back in and tap it again. Because I've got a lot of water in my brush that might fade down in there. But um, for now, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to wide angle out. I'm going to go off camera and finish this one on a wide angle out so we can kind of see them. I really feel like these two are coming into a little bit of the same color. So I think I'm going to wash over this with some alizarin crimson. And see how that, see if that will change the color of the apple a little bit. And remember you're just washing over in the red areas. You've got water with just a little bit of paint. You're just tinting your water. That's all you're doing. It's mostly water. Little, little bit of paint. And I'm going to just put this on the red areas. Don't go into your highlight. See if we can just change the color of this red just enough to make it not look the same color as this. And I think that that did a pretty good job. I might repeat that so it will be just a little bit um, brighter, richer red, but uh, I think that worked out pretty good. So now we can see we need to uh, put a little bit of shading around that strawberry on our apple. So just take a little bit of soft black. and some of your avocado and just kind of go around and tuck a little bit of a little bit of color in there. If you feel like your your dark green gets away from you go in and wash a little bit of avocado just down here in the uh, dark area of your apple. Okay let me wash in some more alizarin. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like that. It makes it makes the apple pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go add that into my instructions. And now our color for this and this do not look quite so much the same. And uh, even though we used different colors on this one, the one color that we used that was the same on both was the Santa Red. So, um, you know, it kind of made them look a little bit more similar. And I wanted my uh, strawberries to, to stay a little bit more on the orangey red side. So, all right, I'm going to go finish this one, and then we're going to work on our cherries here. All right, I've got my last strawberry done here. Um, a couple things I did extra on here was take my white and just give a little bit of a stroke next to some that are maybe getting a little bit of more light on them so we can kind of see... Um, the seeds just a little bit more in the highlighted areas. And then um, 
I decided it still needed a little bit of change of red, so I washed a little bit of Lizarin Crimson over my strawberries. And you can do that a couple of times just in the red area, keep it out of the highlight area. Just a quick little uh, washing and um, it doesn't take any time at all to do that and finish it out. So our strawberries are done. We are ready to move on to our cherries now. And with our cherries we're going to begin shading. Now my circle is my highlight area. We are going to begin shading with the uh, cranberry wine. I want these to, to be a deep, rich, dark red when we're done. So we're just going to take it up to that circle that we drew in there. And we're going to leave the rest of it the uh, color that we base coated it in, which was cad red, I believe. is a Lizarin Crimson. No, Cranberry Wine. <laughs> I might have said it was a Lizarin Crimson earlier, but it is Cranberry Wine that we're using here because it's just a darker, it's very sheer, but it is a um, darker red color that I want to start with. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to repeat it. I'm just going to go repeat it off camera because it's just the exact same thing that I did and when I come back we'll be ready to move on. Alright, I've got two coats on there. We're going to begin our highlight with a mix of Cad Red and Snow White. Just a little bit of Snow White. We just want to lighten up the Cad Red. We do not want to turn it um, pink. Alright, so we're just going to begin Tapping in a little bit of highlight using the water edge, let it soften out. Just a little tap, tap, tapping, and I'm going to add a little bit more white in there. Get it just a little bit lighter. Oops, I like to be on camera, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'm just putting this in the highlight area. You need to make sure your previous little highlight that you put in there is dry. Mine was not quite dry, so I should have waited a little bit. We're going to start deepening our shading here. And I'm mixing cranberry wine and soft black. So three cranberry wines to one soft black. That's a V, so let's round it out and then go down here along this edge. Okay, so we're going to have the stem coming out here and coming out here. So um, we can take our highlight mix, which was the cat red and white. Maybe keep it mostly cat red. Just a teeny tiny scooch of white in there. And maybe put a little bit of a Kind of a dimple area down in the bottom here. We'll come back and put some soft black around that in a minute. All right, let's take some white and we are going to brighten. So let us brighten our highlight here. I'm just going to tap some in, take the water edge, kind of blend it out. 
These cherries will go really fast because they're small and they're not going to require as many layers as some of the other fruits required. I'm going to take that cranberry wine soft black mix that I made. keep you on camera just kind of line this edge here and give it the illusion that there's a little bump in that cherry I'll soften that edge a little bit let's add our final shading on here with, I'm going to have to look at my picture and see where I had those stems coming from because I might need to make a little dimple in these. This is soft black and we're really going to darken this edge. We want our cherries to look like they are rich red cherries. Alright, let me take a look at my line drawing and see where I put my little dimple things in here. So, really, this one we won't see the stem. And this one we can put a little bit of a little something in there. So I'm just going to get a small round brush and take some soft black and just a little bit of the red. I'm going to keep this dark and we'll just add a little darkness down in there where the stem is going to come from. And I'm going to take my cad red and put a little bit of this on each side of it. So we can just kind of set that uh, stem in there. I'm going to just dab a tiny little bit of cad red with some white in it. Maybe a little bit more white so I can get it to show up. And just create a little bit of a kind of a highlight down in there. That might be just a touch too much. I'm going to quickly do some erasing here, out here on my background. Definitely don't want any reds on the background. They're very hard to get off of there. Okay, I think that's pretty good for our cherries. And now we want to wash over these as well. And uh, you can't have cherries without cherry red. So we're going to create a wash of these on here, of this color. So remember, it's, it's water with a tiny bit of paint mixed in it to just tint the water. And then wash over your cherry. Stay out of your highlight. And this one. Sorry if you weren't on camera. Get it off with the bowl. You might want to keep a damp brush handy in case you... Uh, get it down on your bowl you can quickly remove it although we could put some tints of red in this bowl I think it would I think it look pretty and then we can repeat to that red on there I'm gonna wide angle out you can see all of our fruit oh don't they look delicious yeah, I think I'm going to wash over my cherries one more time with that red. And uh, everything is looking fabulous. So luscious and delicious like we could just reach right into that bowl and grab a piece of fruit and eat it. Okay, so next we are going to uh, work on our stems. So we've got a stem coming here. And a stem coming out here. 
and a stem here. You don't have to have stems in any of your fruit if you don't want to. We've got this one here, and then one here. Your stem, your fruit can be stemless. So, you know, it's completely up to you. Like this one, I might just leave the stem off. We don't have a leaf in there. But that gives us an odd number of stems. So I've got a leaf coming off of this one, off of this one, off of this one. So they have to have stems. And I see some little water spots that have some red in it out here. So let me clean that off. We certainly don't want that in our background. So just dampen it and erase it. You want to do this as soon as you see it. If you do that, because um, reds are not easy to remove once they are starting to dry. But thankfully that was just mostly, you know, a drop of water that had some red tint into it. Alright, quick little, another wash of some cherry red on here. I'm going to go and add my uh, stems here on my cherries. So we've got one coming up here. And then this one comes down to that one on the back side. I have a leaf that is going to be coming in front here. And then one here. I might change the angle of that when I change it in there, paint it in there, but I've got to get my leaves. I need to go and get all of my leaves and all of my uh, greenery on my uh, strawberries. I can't even think. <laughs> uh, on my strawberries, I need to get them all painted in with our base coat color, which was some um, blue mist, I believe. Okay, so we're going to get all the leaves, finish painting in the leaves with blue mist. Paint in your stems with um, cocoa. We're just going to paint them all in with cocoa, and then we'll come back and finish out the leaves and the uh, stems. All right, I've got a quick uh, coat of cocoa on my stems, and I decided not to do a stem on this one. And so um, all of the stems except for the cherry stem is going to be the same. So um, grab a small... Uh, brush for floating, an angle brush, a flat brush, whatever you like. And we're going to begin with some burnt umber. So the colors for the stems that you want to have out on your palette is burnt umber, soft black, moon yellow, snow white, and then some uh, of the avocado for this, this stem over here because it's mostly green. So our burnt umber we're just going to, on all of them, shade where they go next to the fruit and up here at the top. Now if you want to give it a little, you know, like edge, a cut edge, you can um, leave a little space in there to create a cut edge and then just kind of gently tap along this um, lower edge. And so they'll all be that way with the with the burnt umber. And they'll go the stems will go really fast because there's not a whole lot of paint you're, you're doing here so you don't have to um, that's why a smaller brush is best. I'm using a uh, 8 flat but I'm you, as you can see I'm staying up on the very tippy toe of this brush so that I don't uh, cover or fill the whole stem so at the base of them okay so that's that's pretty much uh, the shading on the stem part, although I'm going to dip in a little bit of soft black and at the base here I'm going to deepen 
right where it goes into the fruit with some soft black. This one here, I'm going to do just a little bit along, along that edge. But I think the rest of them don't really need soft black anywhere else unless you just feel like, you know, you want to tap some into the, into the stem itself. But they don't really need it in there, so don't feel like you have to um, do that. And then we're going to take some moon yellow and we'll create a little bit of a highlight on here. This is the tiniest of dabbings here. Stems are not a focal point so we don't have to get too realistic with them. And then you can come back with just a tiny bit of white if you want and brighten in just a couple of places. Okay, and that will finish out the, the stems on those. They're, they're done. So um, I'm going to add a little bit more of the... Uh, soft black. Right here I need to shape that a little bit better. So on the cherry stem, I'm going to use a round brush for this one and I'm going to take my avocado and streak it down. I'm going to leave it dark at the tip. Streak it down the the stem. It's okay if we see some of that brown. Stick it down there. I'm just going to wipe it off. Go into a little bit of yellow. The moon yellow. And we'll add some of this in here. Not, might mix it a little bit with the green just so it's got a little bit of a green tint to it because we don't want it to blend in with our Alright, I'm going to wipe my brush off and tip into some burnt umber. And we'll put a little bit down here. And a little bit here. Up here on this, this part where they connect needs to be darker. And then we'll go next to the leaves because the leaves are on top. And then we can come back with a little bit of highlight of just white. And get the water out of my brush first before I do that. Because that'll just leave a puddly, puddly mess. And I think up here on this, because I need them to look a little bit like they're two separate stems. I'm going to put a little bit of soft black. Right there. Okay, and that's the cherry stem. So we can wide angle out again and see our stems. Now on our, our grape one here, if you want to, um, it's totally up to you. You can take some um, burnt umber, maybe mix a little bit of green with it, and bring some, some stuff out from this. I mean, just to give a little bit of illusion that there is. Some stuff coming off of that stem to connect the grapes to. You can maybe bring some over a little bit more on my brush. 
brush here. Maybe bring one over to this one. So we can kind of get the look of some stuff coming off here. Okay. All right, so that finishes out all of our stems. So we just have the leaves left to do. All the leaves are going to be shaded and highlighted with the same colors um, throughout the whole project. Wherever there is greenery, they're going to get these colors. So let's get ready to uh, put those in. Okay, bringing some new colors in here. So we might wash some of these in in some other places here. Um, Hauser Dark Green is what we're going to shade with. So at all of our bases. I don't like to be too er, too smooth when I'm um, doing some of this stuff, so you know, pity patting stuff is okay. I'll come back and deepen. Folded. This leaf is folded here, so we're going to go along this back edge, or this inside. This is the inside of the leaf here. And then we'll do a little bit along this edge out here. We'll come back and do the base of that one. here and do our strawberries. Now this is where you might want to go to a smaller brush and I'm going to, let me zoom in here, I'm going to try and create some, the look of some are in the front, some are in the back. So we want to shade a little bit down here. We need to put some of this green paint onto our uh, strawberry, some of the leaf color, and it is that blue mist. So I've side loaded, and we're just going to kind of scrub some of this in here along this top edge where the stem is. It needs to be just a touch darker than that. Too much water. Just bring a little bit of that down onto our uh, strawberries, and then we can go into our green. And let me shade along down here a little bit. And I want a little bit of this onto our strawberry itself, kind of blend it in with that other. And that looks like the the stem is definitely connected to the uh, strawberry. 
And I'll go up here and put a little bit of this color at the base of this one. We're going to repeat that color. I'm going to go off camera real quick and finish these or get these strawberries up to that strawberry. Okay, we're going to highlight with um, olive green. This is where you can kind of shape, if you didn't transfer your lines well like me, you can kind of reshape your, your leaves a little bit. And olive green is going to look super bright when you first put it on here, but it will fade down in there. I need to take a break. I'm starting to get tired, so my painting is not going the way I would like it to go. And then down here on the strawberry. You don't need very much in there. Okay. Okay, let me wide angle back out here. We're going to brighten with just a little bit of white. And I don't like that. My paint is too dry. My brush is too dry. Just add a little, little bit of this, and it's probably going to fade down in there quite a bit. I'm just putting it on here in a few places. Darken the shading and then we're going to create a center vein here. And we're going to darken with soft black, which I just got all over me. Soft black. I'm having a hard time finding a space on my palette I can <laughs> I can work on. A little bit, just a little bit at our bases. 
and then just tuck some in wherever you need. your shapes here of your fruit. This is just a little bit. And just a tiny bit on our strawberries. Okay, so let's add our stems for everything. All right, our stems are going to be the Hauser Dark Green. And I think I'll mix a little bit of avocado in with that. Because that Hauser Dark Green is kind of transparent, so. We just want to see one, one vein there, not two. Get a little bit more of the Hauser Dark Green in there. cherries here. We got this one coming from there. Here. Here. A little bit more of the Hauser dark green that uh, avocado was not mixing well there. I'm not planning on doing a lot of detail to these leaves, so vein may be the last thing we do. I don't think I want to add you know, all the other stuff in here. The veining inside the... So this one is kind of coming from this side. Down through there. see how that looks. Yeah, that, that vein is just way too dark. So our base color was blue mist. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue mist, put on that, take it down just a scoochy scooch. a little bit darker than what I want. Highlight with a little bit of blue mist here. On our veins. 
and stems. I think that helps there. All right, I want to add a little bit of shading around this where that um, leaf is over it. So I'm going to go into my soft black, get some fresh out here. Actually now I'm going to do burnt umber because burnt umber is more transparent and it won't take away from our color as much. Put a little bit of this under here. And I can give a little bit of shadow stuff here. Where the leaf kind of lays over the design a little bit, I kind of want to give that some shadow. And we're just using burnt umber. I want to put it is here. Create a little bit of a shadow there. And I think that will probably do it. For all that, now we've just got to finish out the shading down here and the border. So let's, oops, let's wide angle out so we can see it. Oh, that looks so yummy, yummy, yummy. All those colors popping out there. Okay, we're going to get ready to finish this project out. It's been a fun one. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. So let's get the finishing touches done on it. All right, are we ready to finish this project? I'm so excited to get this done. I just love how this is turning out. Oh. It's just gorgeous. I just could reach in there and eat those. Um, one thing that I noticed when I came back to this project was um, these leaves up here were just not quite how I wanted the piece to look. Now these out here I don't mind. Um, they look great but these two need just a touch more detail. So let's zoom in here. I've drawn in just some vein lines, so we're going to just paint in some vein lines. I'm going to take some avocado, and on the lighter areas, I'm just going to add some veining with some avocado. Keep them thin. And that's okay if we don't go... Um, all the way to the edge here because I'm going to come back and deepen the shading. That was another thing that I noticed that they needed was um, a little bit deeper in the shaded areas. So just add a few little veins. I'm using a detail liner and just keeping these very thin lines coming from the center vein. Let me find the center vein. And then we're going to deepen the shading here. So I think that will help those leaves look a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and erase my lines that I put in there. Get that out of the way. And then we'll just deepen. And we're just going to deepen with the, the Hauser dark green and mix it with some soft black so we can make a really deep color for these. So 
So I'm going to dip into my green, dip into my soft black, and one more time into my Hauser Dark Green. So we've got two greens to one soft black, and we're just going to really darken back here. And I think I'll go next to the center vein and kind of bring that out a little bit. And I think that's going to help our leaf really pop. So we'll go over here and do this one. Around our grape. Bring some of that into the leaf. And then next to our center vein. each side of it. And that's going to give us a nice, much nicer finished leaf here. I think it's going to look much better with the design. All right, let's finish all of our detail stuff up here. So the first thing I want to do is um, I want to set as much of this stuff down and back behind things as I can. So we're going to do that with, um, I'm going to use burnt umber. So put some burnt umber out and we're going to load for a very soft float. That means you have water in your brush and you blend the paint into your brush. It's nice and soft. Remember, burnt umber is a transparent color, so it won't make things too super dark. Touch your paper towel. Now we want to really set these, these grapes back behind all of this stuff. Okay, that's going to give make them look like they're tucked behind. Push them back into the bowl. Alright, this pear... I think we're going to give it just a scooch more. We're going to go around this grape because that grape is in front and around this apple. And we just want to keep that pretty soft. We don't want hard lines there. We just want to make sure that we're setting it back behind. And then right here, we'll go around this leaf. Make sure that that you painted first is dry and right up through there. And we've already put our shadow right through there on this for the stem, so we don't need to add anything there. All right, let's go to this apple over here. And we're going to go next to the bowl. A little bit more paint. We'll work it in so I can get that really soft color next to the bowl here. We'll go around this blueberry because the blueberry's in front. Stay off of the blueberry. And then we're going to go next to this pear. You want to keep this really soft. Don't let it get too dark and too carried away. We're just letting you know what's more in front. And so this is pushing those items back. I'm going to put a little bit on this leaf here. Okay, so this pear here, I think we pretty much got it. We need to go around this uh, strawberry, though. I don't want all those lines sticking up. And we'll put a little bit more right here. Kind of tuck some of that in. I think, I think that one's pretty good. I don't think we have to mess with that one too much. And the strawberry... looks pretty good. Just a little bit on that green apple. And a little bit here. So that just gives it a little bit of depth. So now we want to do the same thing to this blueberry. It's kind of tucked down in the bowl. These two are setting more up on top, but they're going to have a little bit of 
oops, wrong side. Turn my brush around. I painted burnt umber with the wrong side, so wash it off, reload a little bit. We'll just put a little bit right there. And then along this green apple, we're going to need some and set it a little bit more down into the bowl and the cherries. Grab my mop brush and make sure that's not too hard of a line there. And Okay, I think that really pushes everything back to where it needs to be. I think on my grapes I might repeat that one more time. You could use the soft black it's going to make it much darker, which is fine if you're going for that look. I think everything's looking pretty good. I don't think there's anything else there we need to fix. So um, that was pretty easy. Just nice, soft, soft brushing there. Very soft floating. We don't want anything too wild or crazy. Okay, um, I'm going to start adding some uh, shadows down around the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is tuck some soft black back here. This is our darkest area back here. So carefully go around. Grab my damp brush. I want to make sure you keep the shape of your blueberries okay. And if you're not, Take your damp brush and just remove the paint that you just put on there. Because I covered up the edge of my blueberry. And so now it's shaped funny. So we just want this tucked back in here. Alright. Wash that brush out. And I'm going to go to my. 12 flat. And we're going to side load with soft black. Let me clean off my thing here. I must have had paint all over me. This is just where I've dripped water, and the water had some paint in it, so it left tinted water drops on my project. Alright, soft black. We're going to side load. For a nice float. You gotta have water in your brush to do this floating underneath. You can't do it without water. And I would rather that it be too sheer as opposed to too dark. So can you see how watery that is? But I've still got it only loaded on one side of my brush. This is the soft black. I'm gonna touch my paper the tip of my brush to my paper towel just to get the excess off the tip and to wick out any excess water. So we're going to go around everything next to our bowl. I'm up on the tip in these narrow places. I got eraser shavings or hair or something on there. Bring it down a little bit. Go around the bowl. And that's probably about where the bottom of the bowl sits, so we'll kind of scooch it out a little bit here. That's pretty wet, so using my finger just kind of smeared it a little bit, but 
we can come back and fix that when we put our next layer on. I'm going to reload. I wiped, wiped my brush out because my paint was getting over just a little bit too far. If it gets wider than you want, take the water edge and just move the paint. That's why it's important to have some water in your brush because you can't do that if you don't have the water in your brush. And if you get paint on that water edge, just go touch your paper towel and wipe it off. Water and paint, you gotta have them both. So when you go back to reload, you gotta pick up both. Got some paint on this one, so I'm just gonna remove it. Work it into your brush with some water. Get it nice, almost sheer. So these really dark areas, I'm going to have to wide angle you out because I don't think I'm going to keep you on camera here. Wide angle so we can see the whole thing. There's just some, some really dark areas that we want to make sure that we get more paint in there. So just go over those areas again lightly. Make sure that your previous is dry though. And if it's not dry you'll just lift it. Okay so that's probably good enough for our shadowing underneath. So now we want to do something around the whole entire plate to finish it off. Give it a nice shading around the edge. All right, so to finish the border or the edge on the outside, um, you could tape off and paint a border around this if you want to. I'm gonna use a dampened artist sponge, so I've got it damp. We've got avocado here on our plate. And let me think, maybe I wanna use a different color. Blue mist is a color we streaked in the background. So I might just use that color because it's very pretty as a dark color. So I'm going to pick up blue mist just a little bit on the edge of my sponge. Kind of work it in. I want to keep it in a small area. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of moisture on the other side of my brush or sponge because if I need to move that paint a little bit. I want to, um, don't pick up too much, you don't want to get it too, too damp. Alright, so we're just going to go all the way around, Let's see if that's even going to show up, it might not show up, uh, no that's not going to show up, so I don't think the avocado will work with it, so I'm going to go into some, I have some Hauser dark green here on my palette, so I'm just going to put that in there mix it in with this. Let me get some fresh paint out. So I'm picking up both. I'm, I'm, I worked in the blue mist. Now I'm adding some Hauser dark green to it. I'm going to go to my paper towel and get some excess moisture out because I picked up some water and it's, it was too much. 
All right, so we're just going to take this and go around the outer edge. And you're just keeping that little bit of paint. You're just kind of scrubbing it along that edge, darkening that edge, using the water in your sponge if you need to to um, smooth it out all the way around. water edge. I'm smoothing it out and removing if I need to. I take a look at it and I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit more water and a little bit more of the Hauser dark green. And a little bit more. Oop, or a lot more. Up there. I want that stem area to be darker. I'm going to go along the edge again. I've got more Hauser Dark Green in my sponge this time. And I'm really keeping that right on that very sharp edge of that plate. I'm not laying my sponge flat. I'm keeping it up so just that little bit of paint that I've got is going to work its way around that edge and darken it up. Oh, I think that looks nice. Makes it looks like a green apple. Okay, I think that looks really nice. Um, spritz some more water on my palette here. I'm trying to decide if I want to bring that out more uh, up here at the top. I'm picking up both colors of paint because I don't want it to be enormously dark. Maybe just a little bit out further in these upper corners. Some water so I can move that. Pretty much the whole stem is going to get it. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going around one more time very softly. I mean, I'm barely letting this sponge touch, touch on that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think I'm very happy with that. That uh, turned out wonderful. Some of my favorite, favorite things to paint is fruit, as I've said probably a couple times in this video. And this plate was so much fun to paint this on. Now this plate could be an apple or it could be a pumpkin. So if you want to paint something fall on it, it's a perfect surface for that. Um, but uh, this was super fun for me, one of my favorites. Um, I loved painting this with you guys. I hope that you paint it. I hope that you love it. And I can't wait to see your paintings of your bowl of fruit. If you're watching on my YouTube channel, please give me a thumbs up, share, and like, and comment. And I appreciate you all. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.